everyone, my name is Maria and I am the Green Stitcher here on Flosstube and over on Instagram. Today I wanted to share this video with you and talk about something that um, became a concern to me a few months ago. Um, something that I haven't seen anyone else talking about, at least like I haven't particularly looked, um, but I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. And I thought I would share my tips and tricks for stitching with cats and um, we'll start a conversation and I would love to hear from you guys if you have pets uh, of any sort or if you have young children who as well need to be obviously protected from cross stitch but also cross stitch needs to be protected from them. If you have any tips and tricks, if you have any great ideas on how to make your workplace safe, um, please let me know in the comments. I would be really glad to see your suggestions. So, um, just for a quick intro, uh, for anyone who is returning, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, for anyone new, thank you so much for spending time with me today and welcome. My name is Maria and I am a cross stitcher from Belarus who lives in UK. I have been cross stitching for about eight and a half years now. And um, yeah, that's me. Um, so today's video is going to be uh, all about stitching with cats. Um, I'm not going to be showing you uh, how I stitch with my cats around, I'm afraid. Um, I don't have that footage normally. Because, um, you know, the moment you try to take a cute picture of them because they're doing something funny, they just get startled and run away straight away. What I want to talk to you about today is, um, so um, let's start at the beginning. Uh, about half a year ago, in October uh, 2023, we decided we wanted to have cats. We have been talking about it for a while. We have been thinking about, we wanted both dogs and cats, but with our current lifestyle and uh, commitments at work and other things, we decided um, against having a dog at the moment. We might reconsider later down in life, but for the, for the time being, uh, cats worked much better for us in terms of schedule and feeding and all sorts of things to make both parties happy. Obviously, we take great care of them and we love them very much and we wanted them to be happy in our home as well. So we decided to get cats. We got two at once, uh, because that's what the internet said, um, to make sure they have good company, to make sure they're not um, lonely when you're at work and no matter that I have a flexible schedule and I work a couple of days from home every week um, that's still uh, not enough for a cat to um, sort of have um, that socializing time so having two um, they say is better than having just one so um, we from sort of the moment we decided till the moment we got the cats we didn't have too much time to prep um, however um, and um, I have watched loads of videos, um, a lot of things to do just about cats themselves. But like I said, I haven't seen anyone talking about pets and cross stitch, cats and cross stitch. And so what I was worried about and what ended up happening was um, they were very curious as cats are um, and they still are. Um, and um, my cross stitch wasn't safe, my cats weren't safe around my cross stitch the way I was doing it before. And so what I want to talk to you about today is what are the ways um, you can protect your cats and your cross stitch or your other pets or your kids um, and make sure that everyone's safe and happy and has the best time ever. Obviously I didn't want to stop cross stitching or drastically change um, or um, have to take the cats out of the room every time I wanted to cross stitch. That was not realistic for me. I wanted to still be able to spend time with them and then be around me when I'm cross stitching. But like I said, for everyone to be safe. So um, I'm going to be showing what I've done. This works for me. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it will work for you. It depends on your cat, on yourself, on your organization, all, all, a lot of things. Um, one thing I'll say straight away as well, uh, my um, cross stitch stash organization, and I'll link uh, here to the video about my cross stitch corner with all types of organization worked really well for me, which I haven't done it intentionally for cats when we got them. 
However, what I've built before then uh, sort of worked really well. Um, so most of my cross stitch, just sort of a quick brief overview. Most of my cross stitch stash is put away in boxes, in uh, sort of wooden uh, round uh, boxes, in uh, drawers, um, in packets, sort of all of it, most of it is tucked away where cats don't have access to either fabric or kits or patterns or needles um, and that sort of stuff. However, the process of me stitching um, was still very sort of open to them stealing a needle or stealing um, uh, some threads. So here's what I've done. Um, I will include the picture here probably because I don't want to take it off the wall. I have a magnetic, uh, well it looks like a chalk, a chalk magnetic board that I have purchased um, and it sort of works both ways. First and foremost it looks really great, um, at least in my view. It keeps all of my needle minders and even some of my magnets that I have um, either made or purchased, uh, got sort of as a holiday trinket or um, FFO'd some cross stitch into magnets. And then obviously number two is what I found with my cats at least is if I left um, a magnet attached to a piece of cross stitch, um, they were very curious and they were really eager to try to bite the back off um, or try to get the front off like with their paws and um, obviously I didn't want that to happen. I use uh, quite strong niodine magnets which could be dangerous for your uh, little ones. So to give you an example, um, what I currently do is I use scroll frames for all of my stitching. You have seen it before in my videos. Uh, as you'll see, there is no needle minder or any needles or anything on this one. So this is not an active whip. I mean, it is, but I'm not like today or tomorrow currently stitching on it. Um, it's, it's just set on the frame. There's no needle minders, no needles, none of the sort of 3D elements um, that are standing off from the surface of the fabric. And all of the needle minders, as soon as I'm done with a piece of cross stitch and it's going into sort of storage for whenever I pick it up next time, they go onto the board and out of the way. Um, so as for the needles themselves, I use, I, I might have shown them in the video with the stitchy corner, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I use these uh, needle holders. You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on um, eBay, I'm sure, Alibaba, AliExpress, sort of all of those places. They are wooden and there's a million different ways to keep your needles, obviously. I just found, for me, this is the best, both aesthetically and practically so they just unscrew at the top and you have all of your needles and I have two of them I use uh, 26 size needles for cross stitching with two strands and I use 24 size needles for cross stitch in three four and so on uh, because stitching um, gold collection from dimensions requires sort of four and five and six strands sometimes to do half crosses. So great way to keep your needles um, away and out of the way of, like I said, cats or pets or anyone else. So that's that. Um, then, then let's talk scissors before we move on to organizers and things. So um, I had a couple of scissor um, covers uh, or little sort of, um, yeah, uh, I had a couple of scissor covers before and they were gifted to me um, as um, uh, part of other things and I thought they were cute but I never found them very functional until I got the cats. So um, obviously the cats wouldn't probably necessarily hurt themselves with scissors, however they would try to steal them a lot of the times and um, I would still be worried they might hurt themselves. So uh, again, there's so many different types and varieties and options. You can get like a silicone tip cover for your scissors. Or you can get something like this. Uh, this one is by Neocraft and they use these wooden bases and you just sew on a piece of um, eco leather. Uh, there's more with cross stitch, uh, but yeah, I found that having my needles, uh, my, my scissors tucked away as well helped a lot and they just they are not interested in this and um, this just sits in my desk and my scissors are protected and so are my cats 
Right, um, something else I found they were very interested in. So, um, on a regular basis for uh, my whips, I use these um, organizers. Uh, they are made of plastic with felt um, lining to put your needles into. This is from um, a, um, a design I've just finished, so it's quite sort of empty. Um, there's a version for 50. And there's another version for 30. So this is what my organizer looks like in normal life. It's loaded with thread, it's loaded with needles. I use one needle per thread color to help with organizing my stitching and making it a bit faster and uh, easier, especially for designs where you have a lot of color change and um, small groups of the same color. It helps speed things up a bit more. So. Uh, what I found is because, as you see, the needles stick out, that seems to be the most delicious thing in the house for the cats. So they would they would come over if I had it on my desk and I was stitching, and they would try to like pull pull the needle out of the organizer, either from the top pulling by the needle with their mouth, I mean, or from the bottom uh, pulling by the thread. So I have got two ways of keeping my organizers safe in this case. Um, again, you can do obviously whatever you want. You can put them away. Um, what I found is for easier, quicker access, I can either use textile. So I've stitched this years and years ago and then I FFO'd it in this little cover. Um, it's sort of similar to the size of a reader cover probably or like a tablet cover um, and so I've got it on a magnetic clasp I think it's called I've got some llama fabric inside and the size of it I'll show you now perfectly fits um, the smaller size organizer it's tucked in in there I've got wadding um, in between the cross stitch um, and the organizer itself so the um, the the holder doesn't get damaged by the needles but you also can't feel the needles through so it's closed it can sit on my desk while I'm cross stitching and then if I need to pull out the thread I'll just quickly pull the organizer out and take the, the necessary color uh, obviously like if, if it's away if it's tucked away um, they're not interested anymore and nothing is sort of sticking out so that they've just left this one alone and it's worked really great for me uh, while I'm cross stitching. Um, and the other option uh, for the one for 50, this is again something that I've made um, just as a an aesthetic sort of thing, something that I liked. And then it ended up when I got the cats being very, very functional. So I had again, this is a, a an FFO cross stitch piece. Um, it was a stitch along years and years ago. And then um, I wanted to make a place for these um, organizers. So if you've seen my video about my cross stitch corner, you know that uh, when I'm not currently stitching on a project, but it's a whip, um, I put these away into a drawer in um, the chest of drawers in my hobby room. Um, they're all put in there together. Um, cats can't get in and I know which one is which and yeah, it's tucked away safely. However, while I'm actually stitching on something, either here upstairs in the hobby room or if I'm going downstairs to watch TV with my husband, I need something to um, store them in, have quick access to the organizer, but like I said, uh, somewhere where ca uh, cats cannot get in. So what I've done with this design is I've created this um, cartonage box. So this is fully handmade, starting with carton being starting with cardboard being uh, covered in fabric and some scrapbooking paper as well in some places. And so the way I've designed it is it opens without any sort of um, there's no clasps, there's no closure mechanism except for the front panel um, and the cardboard it's made out of, let me show you on the side, is heavy enough that it just sits closed on its own. So when I open it inside, I've made it quite large uh, to fit quite a few things. So the big compartment, let me show you, in use sort of. Um, so the big compartment fits not one, 
but two. So if I needed a project with a hundred colors, I could stack um, both organizers on top of each other and it, there's still room um, to add other things. Um, and I've also added a little compartment for any sort of supplementary materials you need for this. So what I do when I cross stitch downstairs, because most of my things are here upstairs on my desk, um, I'll have a look at sort of what I'm stitching. So I'll put my organizer here, I'll put my scissors here, I'll put my um, ord catcher, ord bin here as well. I'll put uh, my needle case with extra needles, I'll put the little bead bottles in here as well if I'm beading with this project. And so uh, by taking this in my frame and my stitching stand and my phone, I sort of have everything I need um, to work on a project and then if I need to step out of the living room to go to go to the bathroom or to answer the door if there's a, a mailman coming over or grab something from the kitchen I literally just close the close the top everything's safe everything's tucked away and everyone's happy so I found that this has taken my stitching from being worried and anxious to being relaxed and almost back to the freedom I had around stitching uh, before we had the cats. Again, you can use any boxes, any sort of tins. If you have any tins that fit the size of your organizer, that's perfect. Obviously, other size and shape boxes work really well as well. For example, um, I found that cats are really interested in anything um, sort of spool shaped. Um, if you have any pens or any markers or any pencils or um, I use these wooden um, spools for my master DMC set. If you have anything of this shape, they are really curious. They love these things. They try to sort of uh, push them around with their paws and things either get lost or um, tucked under a sofa or stolen. Sometimes they'll even pick them up with their mouth if you're, if you're not watching them properly or haven't hidden it properly and they'll steal these. So uh, say I'm starting a project in May that requires a lot of crying and I've just put it all away. I'm not playing with um, sort of having it anywhere on display. Um, I found that this is the best option. <clears throat> Another piece of uh, whip organization that I had to change when we got the cats is beading organizers. So what I used in the past is a beading organizer like this and I loved it so so much. So it's an open one as you can see it doesn't have a top um, and if it's only you um, and your partner in the hobby room around the area where you stitch this is good enough and you can um, leave it as it is and sort of be be sure that it's going to be safe. However, if you have, like I said, cats, dogs, any other pets, little kids, um, anyone else who can be very curious and put their little hands and paws in, uh, you cannot obviously have beating organizers like this. So what I had to do is get one of these. Um, again, I've shown it in one of my previous videos. It has an acrylic top with magnetic closure system um, where you lift the top, um, it has magnets on each corner like I said, and then your beads are safe and sound, tucked away, and even if anyone accidentally pushes it off the table or wherever you use it, um, the beads are not going to fall out or get mixed with each other. Another one which is probably quite obvious and a lot of us use these even without having any pets or anyone else who can meddle. Um, project bags, um, I find that it's really neat to tuck everything away. Um, again, my cats at least, if they see any sort of pieces of paper, um, any sort of, especially something a bit thicker like cardboard thickness lying around on my desk or anywhere standing up uh, where I'm trying sort of to look at the pattern or anything, they try to, if not steal them, at least nibble on the corners. So. Um, Putting things away in project bags works really well. Or for example, I'm working on a perforated paper at the moment and I've, again, put it away, you know everyone's safe and then you can still have your lovely friends, um, furry friends around you when you do your cross stitch. 
And another piece for leaving your cross stitch alone when you're not in the room with them for someone who is using um, uh, scroll frames. Um, I imagine if you use hoops or Q-snaps and you have a project bag big enough to tuck them in there, you can just do that. However, for scroll frames, that's most likely not an option. And so I've got um, scroll frame covers. Um, so I use ones with Velcro on two sides. So I just wrap them around my frame, clasp them on the back, and then my cross stitch is nice and safe. Uh, while stitching my Mirabilia recently, I've also found that uh, cats are really curious about beads and you know trying to again nibble on them while they are sticking out from the fabric on um, on the frame. So covering uh, my design with these has been great, and I have a bigger one that I've uh, FFO'd recently for bigger frames. Again, you can sort of do. However you want it, I've had a lot of great advice from my viewers on previous videos recommending to use um, pillowcases, which, which works really good. And obviously, again, protects your stitching from, um, from your f family members. And then, again, this is something that you've all probably seen and a lot of you have used. But again, worked really, really well for me and I had to make it to make my stitching safe and... Um, sound so um i'm not quite sure what they're called i would call it a bobbin holder or a card floss card holder so um the way i stitch if i stitch from stash is um like i said i'll go and pull my cards with leftover dmcs off my uh, from one of these boxes then i will normally just leave it on, the, on my desk and have like a little pile of of these um, uh, with the colors, um, little pile of these cards uh, with the floss and it's going to be a bit of a mess and the cats are going to try and steal them uh, or nibble on the threads. Um, so I needed to find a way where I can have sort of um, a few active colors that I'm using in, um, uh, where I can have a few colors that I'm using in my current project um, set on my desk where I can see them, where I can have very quick access to them and where my cats can't get to them. So I've sewn myself this one with vinyl uh, pockets. Um, I've seen a lot of these online. You can buy them on Etsy. There's a lot of uh, great crafters who make these. They can be a part of um, a bigger organizer. They can be a thing of its own. They can be sort of double-sided. I've just done the same fabric with no pockets on the other side. I think I've got about 15, yeah, 15 pockets here only. Um, I had to make mine bigger, as you can see, because the size of the floss cards I'm using is bigger than, you know, your standard little bobbin size, but it works for the bobbins, obviously, as well. So I'm quite pleased with this and then they quite like anything sort of to do with fabric. So if it's just set in your desk uh, and say you're not using it, you can turn it the other side, for example, and they'll just lie on here and and relax. Um, I think that might be it. Um, oh, one last thing I wanted to show you. Um, it doesn't necessarily have something to do with cross stitch, but again, I found it really useful for anyone who has pets, uh, specifically cats, and storage in boxes. So depending on the texture of the box that you use to store your things, I've got a few of these, let me show you these ones. I've got a few of these IKEA boxes that have sort of the texture of linen almost, but they're made out of paper straw um, material. And so they have like this grid and texture to it. And um, I guess cats really love them. And so I have a few more um, on the lower shelves and they really like to scratch their nails against those. So to stop them ruining my boxes, I've got something called cat training tape. Um, again, I'm sure there's a lot of different options to do this. I didn't want to change my boxes. Uh, that was not a priority. I just wanted the cats to stop um, clawing them. So uh, it comes in a roll. It's a clear tape 
that is sticky on one side. I think a lot of people use it to cover, you know, the parts of sofas or um, armchairs uh, to stop cats from, from scratching those parts. So I've done it for my boxes. And so um, you just cut whatever, however much you need. The other side is sticky and you just stick it on your box and it covers it pretty well. Um, I have seen Valera being very curious about what I've done with the boxes and he was like trying to get um, again, um, at my boxes and scratching through this, but it's it's thick enough that that he can't do it anymore. If anyone's interested, um, I'm sure I've got it somewhere on Amazon. So yeah, cat training tape, quite useful, not just for boxes. Um, another quick one, um, just an observation again, it might be just my cats, might be others as well. Um, I'm not sure how um, relevant it will be for other people because I don't know if anyone else stores beads like this. But just so you know, if you store your beads or anything in your stash with cork um, closures, uh, cork tops on, um, um, on your bottles, um, they're very interested in cork tops. And obviously this could be a choking hazard, so um, these do not stay out on my desk. I found that they'll try to steal them pretty much instantaneously. Um, I keep them in the uh, cardboard box that I showed you earlier where I keep my organizers if I'm beading or I keep them back in the boxes um, in the wooden ones over there that I've shown you in my master set of Mill Hill or other beads. So um, yeah, cork tops, very, very delicious for cats. So I think that might be it. Um, yeah, I hope you found this useful. I hope um, that if you have pets uh, or little kids and you've made some adjustments and you found great ways to keep your stitching and your loved ones safe, you will comment below and let me know and let other ones, um, other viewers know. And we'll have a great uh, discussion and we'll have uh, a lot of tips and tricks on how to make everyone happy. Um, I have found that from the first sort of weeks when they were exploring the house and getting very curious and, and starting to, you know, nibble on fabrics and needles and trying to steal magnets and all sorts of things. Um, and I was very anxious and I was really frustrated and I was worried about my stitching and sort of wasn't sure what the way to reconcile those two worlds was. Uh, so my craft and my and my family and uh, slowly but confidently coming up with these little solutions and changing slightly the way I store things and the way I stitch has helped us all a lot. They're still curious. Um, if I'm stitching on a stand, especially downstairs, because I'll have more space between my lap and the stitching itself. Um, Moira will love to come over in my lap, try to, again, steal the needle minder or try to steal the needle I'm stitching with. So, um, like I said, if I'm away from the, um, uh, if I'm stitching, obviously I can keep her safe. However, if I'm away from the stand and I'm not currently stitching, I'll cover it with, with one of these to make sure everyone is happy and safe. Um, so I hope you liked the video. Um, I hope you'll have a wonderful stitching day and uh, I will see you very soon at the end of April for my April update and mania plans. I am planning to... let me have a look... I'm planning to film around 27th, 28th so I can uh, post the video on the last day of the month, um, on the 30th. Um, touch wood, we'll see how everything goes. Um, we are starting to get a bit better weather in UK, so hopefully we'll have a bit more time outside. Um, with the time changing as well and giving us another light hour um, a day, um, I feel a bit more energy to s sort of pick up the house renovations again. So we're busy with that a lot, but um, yeah, I'm hoping to see you very, very soon. Um, have a wonderful stitchy time and I'll see you later. Bye.